Welcome back to Techspin, and we're taking a quick look at the Dark Flash DK431. It's an ATX case with four ARGB fans, and we have a warning about connecting up the ARGB fans. See the TLDR chapter for that. It's our first Dark Flash review, so let's see if they have an eye for quality manufacturing, and most importantly, how temps are and the finished look. Finishing the look for your build is easy with quality memory from our sponsor, Team Group. Team Group is perfect for your memory needs with DDR4 and DDR5 T-Force Delta RGB sticks, Vulkan DDR4 and DDR5, M.2 and SATA SSDs. Check them out at the links below. If this video helps you, please hit like and subscribe, follow us on social media, and leave your questions or comments below. There's a techspinreview.com companion post and self-hosted affiliate link pages, so thanks for your support. First, the warning up front. Do not connect the fan interface black end to another Molex, as you'll fry your whole ARGB setup and quite possibly your motherboard. With that out of the way, the good points. This Dark Flash DK431 is a well-manufactured, good-looking tempered glass panel case. It's spacious for the latest long graphics cards and top-mounted all-in-one water cooling radiators, easy to build in, and the middle case cool white matches the front plastic. It has a full mesh front for good airflow and comes with four mismatched warm white ARGB fans that have rich colors. The lack of USB Type-C though for the IO is a glaring omission here. Temps are good, but that's due to the open design, the number of included fans, and the CPU air cooler used in testing, forcing hot air out through the slower case fan. New cases on the market like this one are built longer specifically for the RTX 40 series graphics cards, so for gaming, this case falls short. Instead of using 4-pin PWM fans or even 3-pin DC, they're using a special Molex daisy chain for both power and ARGB. Yes, that's as terrible as it sounds. The fans won't ramp up to the massive heat load from a new RTX GPU, quiet and oblivious as they don't connect to your motherboard. In their attempt to save costs and perhaps create their own fan ecosystem, they've effectively eliminated this case from new production or gaming builds. Media professionals, and especially gamers, really care about temps, something Dark Clash needs to understand. You may be able to work around this with a top-mounted AIO exhausting directly out creating a negative pressure build, but the case fans still need to deal with all that heat coming from a 40 series GPU. Unless you're going to strip out the fans, this case is for casual gamers or an office build only. The Dark Flash DK431 comes in black or white, which we have here, however availability and pricing it can be different depending on your country. We'll throw what we can find up here, it goes for about $130 in the US, but it's on sale in Taiwan where we picked it up for just 1800 NT with black cheaper by 100 NT. The Dark Flash DK431 handles E-ATX, ATX and Micro-ATX sized motherboards with a hinged tempered glass side panel and silk pull tab. GPU clearance is 400mm to the front and the actual side opening is 402. Of course, any AIO radiator solution mounted here at the front will reduce the space. CPU cooling has a max height of 160mm and up to 200 for power supplies, still with a bit of room for wiring at that length. This case is 470mm long by 205 wide and 485 high. That's 18.5 inches by 8.1 and 19.1. At 5.48 kilograms, that's 12.1 pounds, a fairly light case as say a TD500 mesh is 15.3 pounds or 7 kg. Included is a screw bag, zip ties, and a manual. The Dark Flash DK431 has two spots for hard drives and SSDs. The drive caddy doesn't come with rails, so you'll need to use a slightly easy to miss thumb screw to remove it and install the drives directly to the sides, though with a power supply in, undoing the screw may prove more difficult. The caddy has a spot for one SSD up top. An additional spot for an SSD is below the motherboard cutout, which is 158 millimeters wide by 135 high. Rear wiring clearance from the back of the motherboard tray to the right side panel is okay at 24 millimeters or almost an inch. The Dark Flash DK431 comes with four 120 millimeter ARGB fans. The front has three and can support three 140 mil fans or a 360 mil radiator. The top does three 120 or two 140 millimeter fans and can take a 360 mil AIO here also with a spacious 55 millimeters from the top to the motherboard edge. The rear has the other included 120mm ARGB fan with 15mm of vertical travel, and three 120 fans can mount on the PSU cover, and two 120s can mount beside the motherboard. Apart from handling two more fans, this spot can actually take up to four more hard drive caddies as shown in the graphic here. However, the caddy design really restricts lateral airflow, and your drives will get pretty toasty with a lot of read writing, so this unfortunately won't be a case for a NAS build. The same page also says a cable grommet is included and shows a close-up of a hole, also called a cutout. 
For reference dark flash, a grommet looks like this. And there's none included with the case. The top of the motherboard tray has three wiring cutouts which are easily accessible thanks to the headroom, but just a little small. For filters, the top magnetic filter covers a very nice open type honeycomb. The additional magnetic filter is inside the right panel, it sits behind a restrictive hole pattern, but the right panel does have captive thumb screws. Setting the glass to the side for safety, we took off the front, pulling from the bottom, it's a bit harder than normal to remove. The double mesh pattern inside the front should filter out dust fairly well, however there's five small openings either side with absolutely no filter. There's no wiring attaching to the case front, which is great. The case rear has seven PCIe slots, however they have these lazy stamped bend off type covers, which should be screw removable covers instead. The biggest problem we have with these is that they require you to remove your motherboard completely, otherwise you'll scrape components off your motherboard if you try with it still there. Remove these immediately. The Dark Flash DK431's glass side measures 431 millimeters wide by 465 high with metal strips left and right where the glass hangs and contacts the case. Black borders top and bottom are 50 millimeters and left and right covering the under metal at 30 millimeters and 22 millimeters. The panel keeps closed with two small magnets, but there's no way to fasten it, guess they expect you to never transport your PC. The case I.O. is located top right side vertically and is noticeably lacking any kind of USB type C port here. The power and reset have a good tight response when pressed. With two audio jacks and LEDs, the case has dual USB 2 and a single USB 3 port. On the DK431's bottom, there's rubber feet in plastic shrouds, about 14 millimeters of clearance to your surface, and the dust filter is fitted quite well and won't come out easily when moving the case. Inside the PSU area are little rubber feet for your power supply to sit on. Good points about the fans, they are quiet, have a rich RGB color, and move a decent amount of air. The embedded fan controller does detect when connected to your motherboard, so you have software control over the lights. The warm white plastic of the fan shroud, however, does not match the cool white case metal by several shades. A warning that this fan and ARGB implementation is non-standard and can fry your ARGB components and even your motherboard if you're not careful. Unlike all recent cases we've tested where fan speeds are controlled because they're connected to the motherboard headers, these fans are solely powered by Molex. This means there's no speed control at all in BIOS or software, and they won't speed up to help push out heat when gaming or rendering. There's no ARGB connector daisy chain or fan hub, instead the bottom fan has an internal hub with 14 modes, a few of which show ARGB. This is the single point that has a standard ARGB connector and can be controlled by the reset switch which is already plugged in. However, the ARGB chain connects back through the Molex connectors to this daisy chain. You connect the orange end into a normal Molex for power and do not connect anything to the open other end. There needs to be a plug here discouraging people from trying this. This is dangerous using standard connectors for a custom wiring solution and the only warning is on the connectors with nothing in the printed or online manual about this hazard. The ARGB connector end doesn't have a standard female with male pigtail, only this weird dual pin one. If you have a motherboard with only one ARGB connector and also wish to connect more ARGB for a CPU cooler, Dark Flash expects you to have another solution, and this isn't very build friendly, especially since the pigtail doesn't cost much at all. So for build tips, set the glass and right panel to the side first, then remove the rear PCIe bend off slot covers. Check the pre-installed motherboard standoffs, match all your holes in the motherboard install. Plug in your CPU A-pin wiring, power supply, a motherboard 24 pin, install the CPU cooler, then DDR4. A warning to be careful to connect Molex power to the orange side only of the daisy chain for the ARGB. Last step is always the GPU and final wire management. So for the Dark Flash DK431, we're using our test bed, an MSI B660 mortar Wi-Fi DDR4 with an i5-12600K and Cooler Master Hyper 212 LED Turbo ARGB, though only with a single fan. Our graphics card is an Asus RTX 3070 08G Gaming at 300 millimeters long. At a 24 degrees Celsius ambient temperature with the four stock fans, we're idling at 30 degrees Celsius for the CPU and 39.3 for the GPU. We ran the torture test with Blender Classroom and Unigen Superposition together three times and the CPU maxed out at 80 degrees Celsius and the GPU was at 72.4. Case noise was 37 decibels at 51 centimeters or 20 inches and the internal Hyper 212 was the only fan speeding up so that's it for case noise. You can see the fast cooldown in the graph though so at least the case is dumping heat fairly well. Please take a moment to hit like, get subscribed, and click the bell. It supports us making new episodes and you'll get notified when we release new videos. I think Dark Flash has a bright future and the DK431 is on the road to getting it right. 
The case is spacious and easy to work in with lots of room for the latest graphics cards up to 400 millimeters and there's plenty of room for any top mounted water cooling solutions. The case is sturdy and well built. The fans are vibrant. Case whites mostly match. Magnetic dust filters and the power supply filter are well done and you can go crazy with up to 12 case fans. The price in your country will either make or break this for you. In Taiwan at 1800 NT or about 58 bucks US, it's a decent looking spacious cheap case with ARGB and tempered glass so I wasn't expecting a lot, though I would have given up a rear fan for fans with standard wiring. And a lot goes into these reviews and I forgot the stamped bend off PCIe covers I mentioned before testing. What? So yep, I had to remove the motherboard again to bend off the covers, reinstall the board and finally the RTX 3070 wasting my time. On Amazon US, however, the Dark Flash DK431 is going for $130, so it's no longer a $60 case, $80 or even $100, but $130, pitting it against cases several tiers up. Here we expect to see a Type C Gen 2 at 10 gig speed minimum. Standard would be a Gen 2x2 at 20 gig speed in the front I/O. Also, we need rubber grommets for the main cutouts beside the motherboard and hard drive caddy rails with a more open shell design to allow much better airflow. Speaking of airflow, back to the ARGB fans. First, they're Molex powered, so there's no speed control and won't ramp up to get extra heat out, though the fans are quiet. If gaming or video editing, you would have to use an AIO radiator mounted at the top to combat this, though I doubt this setup can really handle an RTX 4090. The non-standard fan Molex interconnect is dangerous, and there's no ARGB pigtail if your motherboard only has one header. Having one fan with the controller and other fans slaved to it means if the main fan dies, you'll have to buy a 3-pack to make your other fans work and time troubleshooting to verify if it's the master that's actually the problem. This is a really horrible solution. Playing devil's advocate for a moment, it's true that new components have dished Molex for SATA power connectors, but what if someone is only upgrading their potato case right now? What the freak? <laughs> this thinking relies on all other components either being new or zero user error. You can't guarantee all new products don't use Molex. The problem is it introduces the possibility of frying parts of your system if you're a new builder or if you have experience working with Molex. So Dark Flash, going forward, ditch your proprietary fan control wiring solution and fix international pricing and you've got a winner. If you pick this case or are looking at another one, shopping through our affiliate links below will help us here with no extra cost to you. And follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Techspin Review. And there's companion posts to our reviews on TechspinReview.com. Nice, man. A big thanks to Team Group for being our sponsor. They're a leading solution in DDR4, DDR5, and SSDs, and they won't break the bank. Check them out at the link below. Join the discussion in the comments, and please hit like, subscribe, the bell, and we do reply to feedback. So if you have a question, fire away. We really appreciate you watching this far. Thanks for your time, and we'll see you on the next. Bye for now.